Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, uh, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is an update about this week's um, community media discussion, which we hold every Tuesday evening from 6pm. Um, if you want to join us, uh, go to patreon.com slash Decentered Media, and you can sign up for... Um, uh, as little as one pound a month uh, if you want to pay more that would be most uh, welcome it helps us helps me sorry to produce podcasts about community media and alternative and DIY uh, forms of media and to carry on writing blogs and to host the community media discussion so you get access to uh, some content and you get access to um, the um uh, the, the 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 discussion forum that we run uh so you could either go to forum.decenter.co.uk and you can take part in discussions there as well anyway uh this week we're going to be talking well, or we're continuing to talk uh, uh about the work uh, the ideas that Ted Cancel uh discusses in his book Interculturalism where he um Think, rethinks through um, the notion, the idea, which was uh, much more prominent in public policy in the early uh, noughties, the late 90s and early noughties, but maybe as, from what I can uh, uh, see, has kind of um, uh, dissipated a little bit, which is about the idea of community cohesion and, and what the process is, why the process of development for community cohesion is important what we think of as the kind of outcome of a process of community cohesion and what the benefits are and uh, ted contrasts the idea of the uh, uh, inherited notion of multiculturalism with a an idea of interculturalism and i think it's really uh, a, a, an interesting topic for us to discuss particularly if we're community media makers and we're thinking through and discussing and thinking about how we make content that is relevant to people in different ways. And one of the principal issues with community media is that it is made by and for people who uh, have a, 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 a aren't represented well in mainstream media, industrial media, the, the large corporate organisations, uh, where people are not necessarily represented in all the complexity of their lives and they're not represented maybe fairly there's a maybe a focus on uh, stereotypical views of uh, people from certain backgrounds or they're just ignored and there's a whole sense that lots of people don't get uh, any kind of representation at all or if it is it's very cursory and basic so the principle of community media is founded on the idea of um self-representation and self-determination in the way that we present ourselves and tell our own stories. And an important part of this is how we think about identity and what our social identity is. And our identity is something which is... Uh, um, it, it, it works... I think there's a, there's a, there's a kind of uh, a set of uh, attention between certain characteristics and certain ideas about identity. And on the one hand... We, you know, this kind of notion, this kind of almost postmodern notion that we kind of invent ourselves and a social construction, our identity is something that we uh, uh, create in in the way that we interact with other people. But then there's, there's an essentialist notion to our identity, which is that it's something which is inherent within us, and that issues of you know there are some forms of identity that you can escape. You know, this is a useful way of thinking about it. What are the elements of your identity that you can let go of or, or uh, escape from. Um, most people would probably say that you can't escape from your race um, and that that has inherent uh, biases and inherent weaknesses or inherent uh, social positions within that because our society can be structured around race. Whereas there might be opportunities or there might be occasions where race actually becomes less clear and it becomes more fluid and so what ted argues is that we live in a world now which is we kind of in the uk what we we used to be much more um binary about the choices that we could have 
British or other. Um, now it's much more common to be recognised as uh, Black British or uh, British Asian, uh, and it's interesting how that which, which you put first and which you put second, and that your your claim to your identity can be on multiple levels with with, with elements which are taken from inherited. Um, uh, elements of our um, uh, identity which come from our parents which come from their uh, cultural circumstances and 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 places where they and our, our antecedents our, our generations who've gone before us who come from different places but I suppose the question is you know what do we you know what 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 do we make of our identities in a society where identity per se is uh magnified and is really important but the boundaries between certain identities are uh, less clear that there's a diffusion between identities now on the one hand groups within society are underrepresented and have um, limited access to resources and cultural capital social capital that kind of thing so typically people of for example afro-caribbean descent uh, have very few opportunities for representation in management within media organisations. Uh, it tends to be dominated by white middle class males. You know that's that that's the assumption, and um, we collect a lot of data about this, and we're used to filling in inf- forms and information. So some of our uh, thinking about identity is very much a counterbalance, a counter to uh, in in. Uh, biases and to restrictions of access in the past and 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 views which have maintained that kind of um what's the word i'm looking for there that that you know a, a marginalization uh, and have pushed people out of uh, the inclusive process and the assumption the assumptions that are made and the assumptions that are made that we kind of all share a common social experience, which we don't, uh, and that we're all interested in the same things, which we're not, and that we're all able to do the same things, which we're not. You know, we live in a kind of, I always describe it as kind of like an 80-20 culture where 80% of the media is cre- crafted for 80% of the people most of the time, but that 20% are much more uh, difficult to get uh, to grips with and to understand because it doesn't share the same kind of um, frame. It doesn't share the same reference points. It doesn't have the same kind of symbolic relevance or resonance as uh, other cultures do. And this is the idea that we we actually are not one culture. We are multiple and shared, maybe shared cultures, but we're multiple cultures that exist, coexist side by side. Now, the question that Ted Cantle asks is, is that a um, is that a good thing to have uh, with uh, a, an eye on the future and the challenges that we face and the scope of globalisation, sc- we travel more frequently, uh, c- media communications can exist, can happen you know, around the world with a little bit of coordination. The other day I was... Uh, speaking to somebody in Australia and somebody in Barcelona at the same time. It's just remarkable the kind of the level of uh, engagement that we can have across boundaries now and across cultures. And people are much more open to the idea of experiencing other cultures and learning about other cultures um, and, and appreciating, and it feeds through into our popular culture, and appreciating that there, is, there are... Uh, uh, alternative pathways and dynamics that need to be understood, which m- maybe give a kind of relevant uh, relevance with each other, is that they kind of a uh, uh, an equivalence with each other, which is to recognise and value people's cultural uh, heritage and cultural experience. And so, what do we do in a society that is intercultural? What do we do in a society? What kind of forms of media? will future generations need? And this is my area of, of interest in asking this question is, 
you know, the kind of inherited and legacy forms of cultural identity, we should be very respectful of them in all their forms. Uh, there, 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 there's both positive and negative aspects of all of our cultural stories. Uh, and to recognise only one side of that would be to be imbalanced. We're not perfect, and nor are we completely, um, you know, uh, um, uh, demonstrate uh, what's the word I'm looking for we're not we, you know we're not we're not either evil or good we're both um and that is reflected through the uh the the structure of our uh, stories and our narratives and our uh, uh the archetypes of our the myths of our culture um but what are gonna what what's the situation going to be like in the future what what's being forged now through our uh, interactions and if we bring together uh, corresponding forms of cultural expression and corresponding forms of identity. Where where are we going? So there's this openness to fluidity of identity, and we're seeing this at the moment in the kind of uh, the debates around uh, gender and the debates around you know the, on on the one hand there's an an essentialism essentialism and an absolutism and on the other hand there's an a, a, a self-determinism that one can just merely by wishing to project a change in our gender we also project a change in our sex and many would argue that that's not possible and some people would argue that it is possible and there's quite a lot of controversial debates about where we sit with that now I'm not saying I know the answer to those uh, challenges and those those uh, uh, discussions but uh, we have to be able to work th this through and we have to look at the idea and think about the idea of how representation how senses of identity change over time and one of the things if we're encouraging social interaction and we see social interaction uh, a cohesive form of social interaction as being a good thing because it provides a stable basis for future generations to you know you're not you're not a society riven by conflict and bitterness and uh, antagonism you're a cohesive society now you can do that in two ways you can be a monocultural society japan for example is highly um homogenous uh, there are very few immigrants in japan or you can do it in the kind of the way that we, we we've adopted the approach here in the uk uh, which is to become a, a, a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, uh, mul multiple identities kind of culture. And how, you know, what do we learn from that? How do, and what is our role as community media makers within that process? Where do we facilitate understanding and exchange of ideas about identity? Where do we draw th these threads together? Now, you know, respecting where people's heritage uh, has brought them from is incredibly important but I'm kind of really thinking you know my, my thinking is where do we take this what, what's it going to be like obviously it's going to be more blended in the future but what are the values that we maybe need to um, think about and look at in terms of respectful civic engagement and participation that helps shape future uh, 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 the, the the future purposes of the generations to come anyway as you can see there's it, it it's a complicated area and kind of having the ability to express this properly and to go into all the elements of it is is incredibly difficult and so coming together for a conversation and a discussion is where I think you know the learning takes place and that we can look at things from different perspectives and we can think about and reflect on our practice as community media makers and what it is that we do which maybe just nudges things along a little bit in the future or opens up a pathway for other people to follow through and to deal with things creatively uh, and inclusively in the future as well. So if you want to take part in these discussions, uh, pop over to decentered.co.uk um, and there's a link there for Patreon, which is patreon.com slash decentered media. As I say, from uh, as little as a pound a month, uh, come in and take part. It really helps to have that uh, a validation of and support for keeping this going and talking to people and developing 
you know, where, where, where we should be thinking in terms of our future orientation for community media, which is what I'm interested in doing. And the more people who, who help facilitate that, uh, the better I feel about it and the more, you know, the, the more I'll do it and I'll keep going. Um, Otherwise, you can just follow on Twitter and Instagram. So that's at Decentered Media. Uh, but come and join us 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. Sign up via patreon.com. But until uh, I see you online, have fun. Speak to you soon. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media.